Okay, so welcome to Reliability for the Reactive Dog. Um, so this class, you know, teaches a couple things. Um, one is that if there's any dog that needs to have reliable behavior, it is a reactive dog. Um, and in saying that, I just want to clarify that every time I say reactive dog, I really want to say overreactive dog, because obviously if dogs were not reactive to anything, they would be dead. So it would not be an issue, right? It's when you're, um, you're out in public, there might be a dog running by, a person running by, a dog playing next to you where your dog gets really overstimulated and they cannot control themselves. So it really is about self-control. Um, so working in this environment is great because we're going to do our behaviors amid the confusion and chaos that I hope to emulate in the class, um, as is my goal each week. Um, but also what it teaches them is to look at things. It teaches them to watch the dogs that are jumping. It teaches them to watch the dogs that are playing. Um, and all those other things that can be a real problem in, the, in everyday life. The other things that we're going to work on today is, um, you know, doing our inner line, being in small spaces, because again, reactive dogs, they have their space they like. We do have to kind of bring it in a little bit so they're more and more comfortable with whatever comes their way, okay? And I would love for you to practice more like that, where the head is up, and even if you have to, you know, put a cookie there and don't even click, just put a cookie there, walk, and just have your dog feel what it feels like to keep their head up as you're moving. Do not move fast, you do not have to. When you start teaching this, you do it really slow, all right, because it's very different for the dogs, all right? So I'm just going to pair you up this way. Let's have um, Libby on this side, and let's have Coco on this side. And please know that I'm actually um, using your dog's names because I want your dogs to begin to ignore me throughout all the different weeks. All right. So, um, okay. yep, perfect. Have yep, perfect. And um, so I'm going to say, ready, set, go. When you hear that, you're going to make your way down. Again, it's not a race. You can take as much time as you want. But when you get back here, get your default behavior. All right, any questions? All right, ready, set, go. Yep, just take your time, Cheryl. That looks nice with Miss Libby. And you see the difference? Good, lovely. That's lovely. Beautiful. And just get, put her in her default while we're waiting. And that's perfect, Cheryl, even if you want to do what you just did. Yep, just like that. Let her even um, nibble the treat a little bit as you're moving. That's great. Good, lovely. And just stop and re, yep, if you have to, just stop. Yep, and then just re get your. Get your cookies again, and yep, there you go. I love it when there's chaos involved. You said you forgot, so I get excited. Defaults, please. Good boy. Good job. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. That wasn't the way you had them. You're right, sorry. Oh, you want them exactly. <laughs> Come here. Of course I do. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You may release. Nicely oh, done. Good job. Okay, Lovely. Okay, and what I'm going to do is purposely, I'm going to come behind you. It is really important to teach your dogs that distractions behind them is really not a big deal, okay? With my guys, I may, if I'm taking a class, I may, the class is here, I set them up on the outside with their back to the class. And I know I used to start this way back when with Ben, because when you do agility, um, I'm sorry, when you do obedience trials, Sometimes, you know, your back 
might be, you might be doing stays and somebody sort of dumbbell on the other side, <coughs> excuse me, of the ring. So it's important that they know that any movement behind them or anything happening is, you know, just as easy as what's happening in front of them. So it's important that you get them used to movement and noises and things like that behind them so that they feel comfortable with them. So I'm going to have a cone here. I don't care where you go, but I'm going to put out the cones where you're going to work your stays, okay? And there's one, there's six of us, right? Whatever you ask your dog to do is what you're doing. If you ask for a sit and they melt into a down and you say, well, they're still staying, no, they need to do the position that you've asked them to do. And you just help them do it. It's really just about helping them do it, okay? Is everybody ready? You may either step in front of your dog, tell them to stay either step in front, or you can just stay on the side, whichever you prefer. All right? So leave your dogs whichever way you want or not. 30 seconds starts now. Five more seconds. Return to your dogs. And you may release them. Nicely done. That was beautiful.